Hey there, Cal Kids. Today we're going to be looking at section 2-2, two, two, Limits Involving Infinity and Beyond. Uh, bad joke. Okay, we're going to talk about finite limits, the sandwich theorem, which isn't as delicious as what you think, infinite limits, uh, and behavior models in seeing limits. Okay, so a lot to do. Let's get going. Um, first thing we got to talk about is horizontal asymptote. Yes, remember what horizontal asymptote looks like. You approach it, but never cross it. It's the one that goes horizontal, horizon. So, but we're going to look at this notation. This is your limit. As x goes off to infinity, gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it will approach b. <clears throat> or as x gets smaller, 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 smaller. So, for example, Let's say this is our B. So this is our asymptote. Okay. What we're saying as our limit goes to infinity, we get closer and closer to that B, right? We never touch it. Your limit doesn't have to be that number. That okay? you don't have to touch it. You're just getting closer and closer to it. Oh, there we go. Just. Oh no. Where's my? Curtain, curtain button, curtain button, there it is. So go ahead and sketch this graph. Okay, take a moment, sketch it, um, write this down. This is a very important example. Okay, I'll be here waiting. Okay, that's as long as I can wait for. Okay. Now when you graph it, you hit your table button. If you're struggling with this, just ask me about it the next time we see each other and I can show you in your calculator. Um, you have this table, right? This table obviously is going by 50s, which is not a bad number to use when you're looking at end behavior. Um, so we're looking as our limit approaches infinity, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what does your y seem like it gets really close to? Well, one. It looks like it's getting really close to one, but never crossing it, right? Right, right. Now let's take a look at the second part. As you approach negative infinity, so you're going this way forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Okay, as you go to negative infinity, it looks like you get really close to 0.9999999, aka it looks like your limit is also 1. Okay, so that's your asymptote. And finally, there's only one horizontal asymptote, and it's at y equals 1. Okay, we good so far. Okay, let's take a look at the sandwich there. I wonder if peanut butter and jelly sandwich theorem. I don't know. Um, what the sandwich theorem says is if you have a graph, like the one on your screen, that fluctuates up and down over the axis, but it's getting closer and closer to it, you can take two graphs whose limits also uh, approach zero, and you can see that that fits inside of it. And since it's in between two functions that both limits are zero, that one's limit has to be zero. Okay, sandwich is it in. That cosine of x over x is the jelly and the other functions are your bread. But the method you guys are going to be using to find this uh, limit is going to be graphing. Okay, and you can see that it gets closer, keeps getting closer and closer to zero. Right? And remember, these fancy numbers in your calculator are fancy term for really small. Okay. That's y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote for this function. I know I'm going fast, guys. Okay, stop. No, pen thing. Uh, when I click through these next slides, let my pose men and uh charge up. Just pots and pans dropping, that's fine. Here's what we're going to do. 
Uh, do you guys see these rules right here? You got your sum rule, you got your difference rule. If you look at 2, 1, they're exactly the same rules, just x is going to infinity instead of x approaching c. Okay. Your product rule, constant multiple rule, quotient rule, they're the exact same rules that you had in 2, 1. So I'm not going to spend much time on them. Oopsie doodle. And your power rule is the same one from two to one, so just look back in your notes. There's no use in writing it twice, right? Right? Um, wait, we're halfway through. Let's talk about something else. Here we go. Vertical asymptote. Now, if you're if this is instead of our limit approaching infinity, we're going to look at limits that equal infinity. Okay. What I mean by that is this is noteworthy, guys. You're in calculus, you know, it's noteworthy. I'm not going to hold your hand as much. This is noteworthy. What this says is that if you have a graph, okay, well, let's say this is A. <clears throat> this guy says as you approach A from the positive, or from, oops, as you approach A, Okay, from the positive direction, you go off to infinity or negative infinity. And what this says, as you approach A from the negative side, you approach negative infinity. So these are your vertical asymptotes, right? And we know how to solve for these. Usually you take your denominator set equals zero, right? These are vertical. This is a different way to look at vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptote, your limit equals zero, horizontal it's as x approaches infinity. See, even my daughter agrees. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's time to do some uh, math. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How am I going to get this graph so you guys can see it? How about this? Okay, we're looking at this function, right? 8 over 4 minus x. And we want to know uh, what happens as you approach negative infinity to the left. What happens as you approach uh, the values of... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to zip down here and show you guys what's going on. So this is at 2, and this is at negative 2. I would draw this graph. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to be looking for here is, the first one says, what's my limit as x approaches negative 2 from the negative side? Okay, so you're going in this direction. And what happens? Well, you get smaller, 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 and smaller. So you go down to negative infinity. Now this one says, what happens as you approach negative 2 from the positive side? So we're starting on the positive side, and we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to negative 2, and we go up to positive infinity. This guy says, what happens as you approach positive 2 from the negative direction? So we're approaching positive 2 from the negative direction, we get closer, 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 closer to infinity keeps getting bigger, right? And what happens as you approach 2 from the positive? Well, you get smaller, 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 and smaller until you go to negative infinity. Okay, so your vertical asymptotes are at negative 2 and 2 because we approach infinity from both directions on each of those. Okay. Okay, let's talk about end behavior modeling. Now this definition is a little bit tricky, but it's actually a lot easier than what you think. Pretty much what it is is you get a messy function, okay? And this messy function, you don't care what it does at specific moments. You just want to know where it's going to end up, okay? So pretty much what you do is you take that messy function and you find a basic function that does the same thing that that one does. Okay, you don't have to write this screen down, but just so you know, in case it comes up, 
it, it's called that because if you take both their, uh, you divide them, you get one, because they both are the same limit, because the same thing over itself is one. So they have the same limit. f of x and g of x have the same limit. Okay, so they could just wrote f of x, limit of f of x equals limit of g of x, but they decided to be math people, right? I gotta do a time check. Well, <laughs> let's do two examples and call it good. Oh man. So let's find the end behavior model for this function. So we may look at this and say, I don't know what the limit is right off the bat. But here's what you do. Ready? End behavior model. First. <clears throat> look for largest powers. <coughs> so for this one, it's x squared and x squared, right? Second, divide them. Okay, so we get 3x, leave the coefficients over 4x squared, which is 3 fourths. This is your end behavior model. So your g of x is 3 fourths. So your limit as that goes to infinity is 3 fourths. Isn't that nice? It's actually a lot easier than what it looks. You guys don't believe me? Let's do one more and call it a day. Let's say we had oops, 2x to the fifth plus 9x over 3x squared. f of x equals this. We're looking for n behavior model. So as it goes to infinity, well, I find my largest powers, divide them, and I get two thirds. Remember those powers cancel, x to the third. And that's my end behavior model, because I know what x to the third looks like. It looks like this, right? So I know my limit as I go to infinity is infinity, and as I go to negative infinity is negative infinity, because it's just x cubed. Okay, that's all there is to it, guys. That really is all there is to it. And that will end it for 2-2, halfway through the chapter.